Good afternoon and welcome to the September 16, 2013 regular meeting of the Parks, Recreation and Community Services Commission. I will now proceed with the roll call. Commissioners Fodd, absent. Kalfayan? Present. Khan? Here. Sharkey? Here. Wu? Here. The agenda for the September 16, 2013 meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall on or before Friday, September 13, 2013. At this time, I will take item 7A1, election of officers, out of order, at A as president and at B, secretary. The business before the Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Commission is the selection of a new president. I will now entertain nominations for that office. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you turn on your mic? It says uh, September to September. Uh, is it possible to nominate Commissioner Khan? He will, as far as I know, you're term is up in April is that right I think my term is up in June oh June okay yeah. when so uh, is that? Um, I, I suppose that that's possible. that would be fine sure okay well I'd like to nominate Commissioner Khan are there any other nominations okay I have a nomination for Commissioner Khan um, hearing no further nominations I will proceed to the roll call Commissioner Fouad is absent Kalfayan yes Khan? Yes. Sharkey? Yes. Wu? Yes. I now declare Commissioner Khan the duly elected president of the Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Commission. Mr. President, the task before you now is to open the floor for nominations for secretary. Thank you. I'd like to first thank my fellow commissioners. Thank you very much. Congratulations. It's, a, it's an honor, uh, and I appreciate that for as long as I will be here. Yes, this is good. <laughs> That's true. Um, <laughs> And someone else will be ready to step right up. That's exactly right. Um, could we then have the selection of a secretary? Is there a nomination? <laughs> I'm fine with that. That's fine. If, if uh... so, so you nominate Commissioner Sharkey. Is there a second? Is there a second needed? Oh, we don't need no. a second, okay. actually. Thank Perfect. you. Perfect. Um, okay, I have a nomination for Commissioner Sharkey. Hearing no further nominations, I'll proceed with the roll call. Um, Commissioner Fodd is absent. Kafayan? Yes. Khan? Yes. Sharkey? Yes. Wu? Yes. <clears throat> I now declare Commissioner Sharkey the duly elected Secretary of the Parks, Recreation, and Community Services Commission. What is next? Item two, upcoming council agenda items. Yes, President Khan, uh, members of the commission, uh, coming up tomorrow, September 17th, we do have a report regarding the status of the Essential Homeless Access Center and Emergency Shelter Rehabilitation Project. And we are requesting, uh, one, a resolution of appropriation to transfer $25,000 in CDBG funds from the Essential Permanent Supportive Housing Relocation Account to the Essential Homeless Access Center and Emergency Shelter Rehabilitation Project. And then two, we have a motion authorizing an increase to the SH Ho Hope and Compassion Center uh, funding agreement in the amount of $25,000. Um, with this $25,000, it represents the last change order needed to complete this rehabilitation project, which is a project that is uh, administered by our department in cooperation with the Essentia nonprofit organization to uh, rehabilitate a brand new access center and emergency shelter on, uh, on Tyburn in southern Glendale. Then coming up on September 24th, we have a slew of reports. The first is a report regarding an amendment to an existing lease agreement for a, a cell tower. We have a communications company uh, requesting additional um, a, a space on property that is owned by the Community Services and Parks Department, uh, which is under a lease. So we're asking the City Council to um, pass an ordinance to approve that uh, amendment, which will um, increase their rental rate from $3,000 a month to $4,000 a month. So our department has um, a financial stake in that. Another report we have on the 24th is regarding the Civic Auditorium exterior painting project, and it's a resolution for the City Council to adopt specifications for the exterior painting and authorizing us to go out to bid. Also on September 24th, uh, we have a report regarding the Pacific Park Campus Wayfinding Project, and 
again, we are asking the city council to adopt the specifications. I'm sorry. We are asking the city council to award the construction contract to a good sign and graphics company, the amount of 72000 to uh, begin that construction work. And we're also asking the city council to approve an amendment to the professional services agreement with Hunt Design uh, by $20,000 to increase their uh, $49,000 contract by 20000 Then we have a report regarding the Pacific Park Artificial Turf Project. And again, it's to award a contract to Ono Construction Company. And the contract amount is $820,000. Uh, that includes a 10% contingency. Then we have another report regarding a memorandum of understanding understanding or an MOU between the City of Glendale and the Glendale Unified School District uh, for the transfer of maintenance, operation, and management responsibility for Stengel Field. Um, the school district is scheduled to vote on this MOU at their meeting tomorrow, and subject to their approval, our council will vote on it the following week on the 24th. Um, and then also on the 24th, we have um, a report regarding approval of specifications for our landscape maintenance contract for a new three-year term. Um, and so we're asking the council to adopt these specifications and um, authorize us to, to go out to bid for landscape maintenance uh, services. And this would be a we contract for all landscape maintenance that is not um, on park facilities. So this would include the medians, fire stations, libraries, anything that's not a park we contract um, the landscape maintenance for those facilities. Then on October uh, 1st, we are submitting a report for the 2012 winter shelter closeout and um, requesting um, and, and recommending the City Council uh, support the 2013 winter shelter program that will be operated by Ascensia. Um, and then we are, we have a proclamation also on October 1st uh, to proclaim October as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Glendale. And uh, this is as our role of staff to the Commission on Status of Women. So we're doing this on their behalf and they will be accepting the proclamation. Then on October 8th, we have a report regarding the status of Stengel Field and the motion for the City Council to provide direction on options to address the structural condition of the stadium. Uh, you may or may not know the, the stadium um, is closed. It's, it's not usable because there are questions as to the, the structural integrity of the building and um, um, uh, uh, whether it is, it is safe to be in the building. So it's been locked up for two years. Uh, we recently received a, a final um, engineering assessment and investigative report which is suggesting that we need to uh, keep the building closed and decide to um, uh, rehabilitate, try to preserve it, or maybe even demolish it. So we're going to go to the City Council and, and ask for direction on um, which avenue they would like us to pursue. So that's on October 8th. Um, and, and of course, that discussion will be in collaboration with the school district and the college because they're the primary users of Stingle Field. Um, and that's it. The uh, Stingle Field building, is it a large building? It's a fairly large building. It's a, um, it contains two clubhouses, uh, coaches, offices, um, uh, shower facilities, uh, bathrooms, uh, concession stand, and then the bleachers are built into the structure. And the prob problem is um, the bottom of the bleachers um, uh, is the, the roof of the building and the way the bleachers are bolted into the roof um, over years there's been perpetual water intrusion which has compromised the structural integrity of the building and there's really no way of, uh, of remedying that well I take that back there is but it, it would be extensive um, uh, rehabilitation cost okay. so it's, it's a sizable building uh, the bleachers uh, seat 1800 so it's, it's pretty sizable okay. thank you Thanks. What's next? Item three, commission staff comments. Any fellow commissioners have any comments you'd like to make? I do not. I wasn't here for the last meeting, but it was nice to hear. Cruz and I went really well. Congratulations. 
Jess? Yes, Mr. President, I do have one comment. Uh, it's regarding the Rose Float. We will uh, provide the Commission with a fundraising update at the October meeting, and uh, I, I think we'll have some good news. But I also want to re remind the public that the official deadline for um, uh, donations uh, at a minimum of $25 in order to be entered into a drawing to ride on the float uh, is November 15th. Uh, so that will, that will be the deadline. That's the date that we have to have the drawing. You could continue to donate um, after that date, but if you want to have a chance to ride on the float, uh, you have to make your donation by November 15th. Great. Any other staff comments? Okay. What's next? Item four, introductions and presentations at a community services and parks media team presentation. Okay, um, President Khan, members of the commission, um, <clears throat> I'd like to give you a brief overview of our media team, um, CSP media team. Um, this is a team that, like, if, if I may interject, I, I meant to give an introduction to this uh, agenda item. Um, at last month's meeting, there were a couple of questions or inquiries as to what the department does to get the word out to inform the public and how to market our facilities and our, our programs to make sure that uh, the community is, is, is aware. And, and of course, there's a direct correlation between the community's awareness and use of our facilities and enjoyment of our facilities and the department's ability to continue to, re to raise revenue. But, I probably failed to mention is that we do have a very active uh, media team, which is comprised of uh, different members of our department from different sections within the department, and they meet on a regular basis uh, to monitor um, our marketing and all of our media outlets. As, as you know, social media is um, quickly becoming the primary source of getting information out. And I am very uh, impressed and proud of the work that our media team has done to date, and I think you'll be impressed as well. So this presentation is to review with you everything that we do in all the different ways that we um, <coughs> uh, do outreach and advertising of our um, activities. I'm sorry, I'll make No, no problem. Thank you. Um, the media team was um, created in, in 2011 uh, to spread the workload of the department's PIO. That was a full-time position that we had a few years ago, uh, but that position and the employer retired, so we went ahead and um, created a media team. Uh, the media team consists of um, um, Sevak Garibedian, um, who's in charge of the city, not in charge of, who's part of the citywide media team, the citywide web committee team. The, the, he handles the department website, the department newsletter, and the city connections. Uh, we have Julianne who handles the Twitter feeds, um, all the tweets that go out. Moni Carrera who handles the leisure guide, the ZMAC flipbook, and email list management. And Norma Vias who is also on the citywide media team and she handles all the Facebook posts. And of course all the press releases go through. Uh, myself, I review it, uh, send it out to Jess, and once Jess approves we send it out to uh, CM's office, the city's PIO. Um, let it be the community uh, assistance uh, coordinator or community outreach coordinator. Um, all the CSP sections that we have um, provide information to uh, Monique. Um, she creates the leisure guide and all the people or all the members in the media team take all the information out from the leisure guide and we provide information to the city connections, the homepage, GTV6, Look ahead, the bulletin board, Facebook, Twitter, and department newsletter. So basically, the, our leisure guide is the hub of all the information that we have, and we distribute it, um, let it be monthly or bi monthly, to all our uh, different media outlets that we use. Uh, the leisure guide, we do have a printable version. A couple years ago, we would print out 15,000, send out 15,000 hard copies to Glendale residents. Uh, we stopped that. We're going green. We've been going green. We have quarterly publication. Um, we have it available in two formats, the online format and also the uh, flipbook ZMAG format. 
We have limited copies um, in black and white for our front counters at our community centers and customer service office and at City Hall for the residents that do not have access to email. Um, primary source of information, we use it for upcoming events, our lifelong learning program, ongoing programs that we have throughout park maintenance, our trails and safety patrol, um, our human service programs, and also our facility rentals. Um, it's easier to navigate um, through the document, and we also have included active hyperlinks um, in the leisure guide. Um, the leisure guide, ZMag slash flipbook, um, it's a magazine. You like, look, feel, interactive links. We have videos. Uh, Monique uh, from the customer service office, she's basically created a number of facility videos, let it be indoor soccer, all of our uh, community centers have videos up at the um, on the flipbook, so they can visit our leisure guide or web page, and you can see a video of our facilities with new and improved pictures, high quality resolution pictures, and so on. The CSP website that Sevoc handles is managed weekly. Um, all our department sections have information on there, from CSP, CIP. Uh, our capital improvement program, our trails and safety patrol, uh, human services, special events, and so on. The new to the home page, we have the current hero image, the no smoking signs um, that we had put up, the aquatics and day camp registrations. We have um, recent news and updates, upcoming events, ongoing programs, the Twitter feed. If you want to join our mailing list, you can put your name on the website and so on. Um, currently, the website has 219 pages. We're looking at consolidating some of the pages to make it more user-friendly. Sevag is working with um, the IS web development team to uh, basically consolidate and make it easier for our users to navigate where they uh, want to go and what information they need. Uh, major changes that we've done, we have a master list of parks, facilities, and community centers and historical sites and special use facilities. We have a parks amenities list, which is available to the public. We have a parks map, facility pictures, and aerial pictures of properties. We use the aerial pictures, especially when we uh, uh, reserve the uh, buildings and parks for film permits. Uh, recent changes, or future changes coming along, is the new interactive parks map. Um, it will be a one-stop resource. Um, users receive the location, parks amen amenities, pictures, and so on. Um, actually, they're going to, IS department's going to go to council tomorrow to present the new interactive parks map uh, tomorrow night. Um, this is what it looks like, a sneak peek. We have the, this is the entire page. We have all our parks um, with green icons. You can sort by park or uh, landmark, the park name and the weather, the current weather location. We we'll also have links here to any of our rental brochures or any of our events or any brochures that we have. We can update this uh, basically daily. Um, we also have, if you click on these icons, pictures will pop up. I believe we have five pictures for each site. So if someone wants to see Pacific Community Center or Pacific Park, um, or this is actually um, Casa Adobe, so I can pop up Casa Adobe, and it'll give me the location info, how I want to view it, and also a picture slideshow of all the uh, amenities that that park provides. The CSP, our website, we have an average of 14,000 page views a month. Um, park's highest total page views was 26,491 in June of 2013. That's our busiest time of the year with all our day camps and aquatics. May 2013, our summer aquatic page alone had 7,349 page views. Um, this year we did something new. We had our aquatics registration open to Glendale residents uh, for the first day of registration. And our aquatics program was announced via website, Twitter, Facebook, the morning of registration, 5 a.m. And uh, we had no problems. Uh, everyone, all the Glendale residents were happy that we announced at 5 a.m. So everyone got a fair shot. Uh, to get, you know, their classes, um, the classes that they wanted. We also have brochures available online. Um, the brochure on top is our new filming in Glendale Parks brochure. 
once again, Monique worked with our uh, graphics department to create this brochure. Um, it's hot off the press the last two weeks, so we're going to make a few hundred copies, and we're going to go ahead and meet with location scouts and location managers in the Glendale, LA metro area and pass out this flyer to bring them into Glendale so they can start filming in Glendale. Um, the brochure on the bottom is our picnic reservation and building brochures. Uh, we use this for any of our community buildings and picnic uh, sites such as Casa Adobe, Cerritos, Joe Bridges, Dunsmore, and so on. Um, the next brochure is our trails um, in Glendale. We have that online also, and of course our wedding brochure. We showcase our uh, uh, wedding garden at Brand, uh, the tea garden, and uh, make it available for rent. The CSP Newsletter, it's a monthly publication. Uh, the subscription is managed online by the re uh, recipient. Uh, Seva works on this. Um, we send it out, we try to send it at the first three or four days um, of the month. Contents include upcoming events, the services offered, news, uh, leisure guide available, and new classes. Uh, we market all of our programs and events via the leisure guide, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the newsletter. Um, since the media team inception, we've had 24 monthly newsletters emailed so far with three special event promotions. Um, and average, the top click, if you see the top click here, a leisure guide gets the most clicks. So a lot of people, once when they receive the email for the newsletter, they click on the leisure guide, which, like I said earlier, showcases all of our programs and services that we offer in Glendale. Okay. Um, we also have the Twitter. We have in instant access to the followers, uh, notification of field conditions, upcoming events, special events um, by private promoters at CSP facilities, and notification of citywide events. And basically, the good thing about Twitter is real-time event update and promotion. Um, so far, we've had 126 tweets. We have 299 followers, 25 retweets, and 63 mentions. The, excuse me. The retweets, the retweets are very important that we get is because it um, gives us more exposure. So if I have my Twitter account, I retweet, all my followers will see what I've tweeted through COG Parks. So Twitter is a really good tool on promoting any of our special events and programs that we offer. Because once when you tweet, someone else, one of your friends will tweet and it'll be on their wall. It's basically like Facebook. Um, our Facebook page was launched uh, a year ago to tomorrow. Um, average is about, we get three times a week, uh, posts three times a week. As of today, two o'clock, we've had 459 likes. Um, 452 was as of last week. We usually uh, post things on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, that's based on our Facebook activity. Um, we've had 205 posts over 11 months. Typical content, you know, trails and open space, campfire. We have our interpretive program, department-wide, um, city-wide special events, and various activities within our department. Um, the last event that we promoted was the 10th anniversary celebration at Pacific Park and also the indoor soccer uh, grand opening event. Um, the highest reach uh, we got on Facebook is, of course, the elections reminder our proposed 100th rose float design, two new trails grand opening at the sports complex, the Cesar Chavez event at PCC, our vintage paper fair, which is a private event held at the Civic, our soccer team sign-ups for indoor soccer, cruise night, and Camp Rosie. So the Facebook is really, uh, we got a lot of hits on Facebook and also a lot of positive commenting, um, especially about our aquatics program um, over the summer. Uh, we also have a Facebook page for Verdugo 10K that was launched January 17 of 2013. Um, average, we post one to two times a week during the months of January through May. Um, we've had 39 posts in over eight months, 202 likes. Uh, typical content would be res race registration dates, race-related updates, photos, and results. The highest reach for uh, the Verdugo 10K Facebook was the behind-the-scenes photos. Everyone was interested in looking at the photos the day uh, before the events, the race results, fire updates, because we did have a, uh, the Chevy Chase Canyon fire um, a week before the event, so they were 
asking questions about our fire updates. That was, like I mentioned, Twitter. Uh, Twitter was a great asset during our the fire activation because I know our city media team was communicating everything via Facebook, Twitter, and our 1-800 number. Um, Cesar Chavez event at Pacific, the new smoking signs uh, that we worked on a few months back, and also the race training photos. Uh, some fun facts. Um, social media, um, the use of any social networking site, 67% of adults um, ages 18 through 29 use social media. Out of those 67%, another 67% uses Facebook. We have Twitter use of 16%, Pinterest 15%, and Instagram 13%, and Tumblr 6 So going forward, the media team eventually would like to uh, tap into Instagram and Pinterest. Instagram is a, a social media uh, form that we can post pictures. Um, a picture, you know, is worth a thousand words. Opportunity to visually engage users and followers. We can have live picture postings. I know uh, during cruise night, we had a lot of our uh, cruise night attendees post um, pictures of their favorite vehicle on Instagram, and then we went ahead and gave a price to them um, at the end of the night with the best picture. So we can have live picture postings during events. Pinterest is the online pin board. 80% of users are women, 50% of which have children. It is known that Pinterest referrals spend 70% more money than other social media referrals. If someone on Pinterest um, basically makes a recommendation of some type of product, if I'm a parent and I post something saying aquatics classes in Glendale are uh, amazing, um, basically the business, you know, we can get a lot more aquatic registration. So this will help us out in our marketing. If word of mouth we get a lot of uh, compliments on Pinterest, then the user will go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead with that referral. Um, the end. I have... Uh, from the media team, I have Sevak, Julian, and Monique here to answer any questions, but this sums it up um, regarding the media team and how we do to market our programs. Are there any questions? No. I did have a couple questions. Sure. Um, is there, do you guys do cross-marketing where you would, let's say you're advertising or, or displaying that the car show is coming up and you figure that a lot of people that would go to that car show may go to other events, so you'd put something on there that would interest them as well. Do you do things like that, or is it just solely for that one event, and I click on that, and that's what comes up? Uh, we, we've we done it for the cruise night, but I'm not sure about the, any other events. I know for this year, for cruise night, we posted up various media. We also sent it out, email blasted it to the CM's office, and they... Uh, had a press release, so we saw it on uh, car magazines um, in Southern California, many car magazines in Southern California. But we'll look into that cross-marketing. The other question I had is, and, I, and only, it just popped my mind when I was coming here, was on the Glendale B line, they used to not advertise, and now they advertise on the side and on the back. Do we do any advertising on any of our city websites or, or any of the other types of social media? Um, Savag, do you want to? I know we have links on our city website and our CM's office. They link and tweet out to their users too. But as for bus locations, I know there's a charge to have advertising on our buses and our bus benches. But Good afternoon, President Khan, members of the commission. Currently, no, we don't do any advertising on our social media sites or uh, via Twitter or Facebook or anything else for that matter. There is a citywide social media policy that we have to adhere to, so we're only limited as to how many items or where the items could come from for us to retweet and post. So it basically needs to be something that the city's co-sponsoring or collaborating with for us to put out that information. Okay. And, and in terms of the Beeline, no, we do not. Um, similar to the Beeline, we do not put any advertising on our Facebook page or anything like that. Eventually, as time goes on, uh, and we could actually measure our social reach better, we'll be able to put a 
price value on it and explore that possibility. But for now, as it's only been around for about a year and a half and we're not really developed in Pinterest and Instagram, for us to put a price point and collect advertising and, and put that up, I don't think we'll do any advertisers any justice for now. Okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. What's next? Next is item five, oral communications. I don't have any cards. Okay. Item six, consent items. At A, approval of the minutes of the commission regular meeting held on August 19th, 2013. Do we have a? I'll move it. Second. Second. Sorry, was that Wook of seconding? Yes. yes. Thank you. I'll take roll call. Commissioner Swad is absent. Kalfayan? Yes. Sharkey? Stain. Wu? Yes. President Khan? Yes. <clears throat> Item 7, Business Agenda 7A2, Resolution Establishing New Fees for a New Mobile Skate Party Rental Package, Semi-Private Skate Lessons at Verdugo Skate Park, and Semi-Private Swim Lessons at Pacific Community Pool. Good afternoon, President Khan, members of the Commission. I'm Gabrielle Golia, the supervisor of the Glendale Sports Complex and the Sports Section. Um, I'm here today to um, request approval of a resolution establishing new fees for a mobile skate party, as well as um, some semi-private skate lessons and semi-private swim lessons. Um, we request that these uh, also be recommended that the, we also request that these are recommended that the City Council incorporate the fees into the comprehensive citywide fee schedule. Uh, the Verdugo Skate Park um, has been operated uh, year-round. We operate in the afternoons and evenings year-round, um, as well as uh, all day on the weekends. And then during the Glendale Unified School District summer break, we're operate, we operate from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day of the week. Um, it's primarily a drop-in facility for skateboarders and for um, its adults and youth, but we also offer some programs, including private skate lessons, group skate lessons, and we have some weekend uh, special events. Uh, we have a Friday Night Light program. Um, a couple of years ago, we did purchase some mobile skateboard uh, equipment. Um, this is a self-contained uh, equipment that folds up into a little trailer. It rolls right onto a truck or into the back of a van. Um, it is very easy to transport. It includes safety rails, quarter pipes, pads, ramps, um, a suggested layout. It, it's pretty much got everything except for the skaters and their skateboards. Um, and up until this point, we, we have not been using it very much. It is available for city, uh, like our department special events. Um, but similar to the Glendale uh, Party on the Go, the mobile recreation uh, rental package and also the Glendale Rocks climbing wall package. We would like to make this available to the public as a rental package. Um, it will be for use in Glendale, um, primarily for business rentals, special events. Um, it could be for a birthday party in a park. We wouldn't go to private residences, but we would go to rentals within one of our um, existing parks. Um, the proposed fee for it would be $300 for two, the first two hours. That includes two staff and two hours of rental. Um, every additional hour would be $100. Um, and, and if we needed any additional staff, it would be $20 an hour. Um, that is our standard rate. We also have the, the standard nonprofit discount as well as the corporate rate. If somebody were wanting to charge participants money in order to gain money for it, or if they were renting it for a film, perhaps, um, that would be when we would charge the corporate rates on this. Um, in addition, at the skate park, we do have the, uh, the private lessons. Currently, we do offer private lessons for one child with one adult, with one of our staff. Um, we are suggesting that we add, the, at, the current rates are $40 for an hour for those children. Um, we have had a few requests. They don't come rolling in, but we are looking to have this service available to the public. So if a parent has two children and they say, well, do I really have to pay $40 for each child? Couldn't I get a discount? We would like to get approval to um, have a fee that would provide that discount for semi-private lessons. Um, the proposed discount is $5 off per child um, for every additional child in the class. And the one caveat for that is that all the children would have to be at the same level. We wouldn't be able to teach a class where we've got an advanced student as well as a very beginner in the same semi-private. So, so this would be for multiple children who are of the same level. 
Um, so for two students in a semi-private lesson, it would be $70 for the hour instead of 80. And for three, it would be $90 for the hour. Um, similarly, we also have our, our private swim lessons. Uh, Pacific Community Pool has been open since 2011. And it is a very, very popular program and pool. Um, we are packed during the summer, especially on really hot days. And private lessons have become very popular. We do have private lessons offered. We work with the parents on them. Usually it's during the lunch hour when we don't have any additional programming going on. Um, and the, the lessons there are $30 for 30 minutes. So we would like to offer the same $5 discount per student and with the same uh, contingency that, or the same standard that they all have to be at the same level of swim lessons. Again, we can't do a beginner with an advanced student. Um, so for the private swim lesson, the semi-private swim lessons, it would be $50 for 30 minutes for two children instead of 60, so $5 off each child. And um, for three students, it would be $60 for 30 minutes. Do you have any questions about these fees? Questions? Please. Do you have the demand for private lessons? Uh, how did you develop this program? Um, our, at the swimming pool, um, the demand is very high for private lessons. Our group lessons do fill up very quickly. And um, parents also want that one-on-one -on -one attention or for maybe if they have two children or a party, a group of friends, neighbors, that sort of thing. Um, so we have had a demand for private lessons especially. Um, the semi-privates are we're not sure how big the demand will be, but we wanted to offer the opportunity to parents. We've had a couple of requests for it. How about parents that they cannot afford it? Uh, do we have a program for them? We do. We offer the group rates, uh, the big group lessons. Um, those are uh, eight lessons, so it's a two-week program, Monday through Thursday, and it's $40 um, total for the entire two weeks. So it's, uh, it's much, much discounted off of this. I have a quick question. Yes. What sort of selection process do these coaches go through? I mean, do we do background checks? Do we yes. um, The swim lessons are offered by our lifeguards. Um, so all of our lifeguards are certified through the Red Cross. Everybody is, life, is uh, fingerprinted through the Department of Justice when they're hired on. And the only people who are able to teach lessons for our program are certified through the Red Cross as water safety instructors. So they've taken an additional course through the Red Cross that certifies them as teachers in all of the strokes. Um, and with the skate park, um, all of the staff are, the, all the staff that teach lessons are skate attendant twos, which means that they have gone through an instructor candidate course through the Red Cross and they've also been fingerprinted for us. Okay. Any other questions? No. Want to make a motion? Is there a motion? Go ahead. We'll be I'll second it. <laughs> That's all right. Um, Commissioner Swad, absent. Kalfayan? Yes. Sharkey? Yes. Wu? Yes. President Khan? Yes. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. 7B reports information only at one Civic Auditorium annual report. Good afternoon, President Khan, Commissioners. My name is Laura Deli, and I'm the supervisor of the Civic Auditorium. And I'm here today to make the annual presentation for the Civic Auditorium. The Glendale Civic Auditorium was built in 1937, and it was the largest municipal auditorium on the West Coast. Since then, it's been renovated twice in 1964 and in 1997, and today it stands as a lasting symbol of the old and the new. The Civic Auditorium has two halls called Upper and Lower Auditoriums. And it is rented for different type of events, meetings, private parties, receptions, conventions, seminars, trade shows, sport and religious events, auctions, trainings, and it provides adjacent parking area close to 495 spaces, security and insurance services, it is handicap accessible, AV services, Wi-Fi connection, and it's a convenient and safe location. The upper auditorium has 11,000 square feet. It is an open layout, has a full stage hardwood floors, high ceiling, 
and wide entrances, accommodates up to 1,100 people theater seating and 800 people banquet seating with a dance floor, and has adjacent areas, terrace room, north foyer, commercial full, full kitchen, and dressing rooms. It has designated parking, the garage structure for up to 370 parking spaces. The Civic Auditorium, Opera Auditorium, as you see in its naked condition, and here it is all for different type of events um, with different setups. The lower auditorium is 12,000 square feet, has a middle sunken area with parquet floors, lower ceiling but better acoustics, storefront entrance and lobby counter bar area, accommodates up to 600 people for dinner dances, banquets, receptions and festivals. It is a favorite place for birthday parties and weddings, especially because of the sunken area using, uh, being used as a dance floor. Adjacent areas are commercial full kitchen, south courtyard, conference room, designated parking, and lot 31 has about 160 parking spaces for lower auditorium events. And here is the lower auditorium with a couple of different setups where uh, on the left bottom you can see the sunken area is being used for a dignitary luncheon and the right one is from a birthday party when, where sunken area will be empty for a dance floor. The Civic Auditorium is a multi-purpose facility, provides versatile arrangements, accommodates a wide variety of events, and looks different with every setup. Here we have some pictures from different events, recent events, and with every setup, as you can see, they'll be looking, it will be looking very different. This is from an ACF dinner dance fundraiser. Uh, they decorated the entrance area for their VIPs, the same event. The lower auditorium for the, from the last uh, New Year's Eve party for, for the Hungarian community. This is the newly launched uh, indoor soccer setup, and it attracts the younger and the older crowds. The lower auditorium uh, from a birthday party, sunken area used for a dance floor. This is the Scientology annual meeting up to 1,100 people. They use our location for their annual meetings as an overflow. The North Foyer is decorated and uh, made as a bar area, private lounge area for a um, fashion show. We have a variety of stage performances, concerts. The boxing event just came back after many years, and a few weeks ago we just had our event. The pictures are from the recent boxing event. Another fundraiser, dinner dance. The guitar show the first time came to our facility a couple of months ago, and we're hoping that they're going to come back. They're finalizing their numbers. Uh, we moved this event from the Santa Monica Civic Auditorium after they got closed, and proud to say they chose our, our auditorium as a trial facility um, in this area. Uh, the Civic Auditorium um, hosts the Red Cross Blood Drives. We have three to four events per week for many years now. The Cat Show comes to the Civic Auditorium a couple of times a year, and we're thinking they're going to expand. Last November, we had the Ramos Circus a family targeted event in Lot 31. It was very successful. The kids were having a good time. Uh, the Civic Auditorium is a good location, uh, is a location also for the Emergency Operation Center. Uh, we have city wide trainings, department personnel tests, wide meetings, uh, special events, and GVSD events, workshops, and career fairs. This is one, one of the picture from one of the events. And here is where the city management addresses the public about the fires that we had several months ago. We assist our customers with event planning, civic event permits, diagram layouts, equipment setup and breakdown logistics, event management and operation. The civic auditorium is an enterprise fund operation and for several years, for many years actually, we've been operating at a loss. 
However, uh, for the last five years, we were able to decrease our uh, deficit by 49%, bringing down from 433,000 to about 213,000 in 2012 13 fiscal year. STEF uh, projects that loss will be reduced to approximately $170,000 uh, in 13 14 due to the br bringing new events to the Civic Auditorium, such as new tent circuses, sporting events, new type of public expos and festivals. The new events include Ramos Brothers Circus, and just recently we also contracted with another uh, circus group called um, Circus Caballeros. Ramos Circus is coming back in November and Circus Caballeros in March of 2014. Um, Art of Boxing event moved back and we're hoping that they co they'll continue their events at the Civic Auditorium. They were here for many years and then they had to interrupt and uh, successfully they came back a couple of months ago. The indoor soccer um, launched their weekday events at the Civic Auditorium and it is very popular among the younger and adult players. The Magda Cairo Belly Dance Carnival um, used to be at the Civic Auditorium for many years and several years ago they moved out and uh, we just signed another contract for the upcoming sp spring season. It's a very successful big event. They utilize upstairs and downstairs and we have close to 4,000 people over the weekend. Uh, Book Fair is another event that uh, we're bringing back as a, uh, under different promo promoter, of course. In two 2013 was their last event and they had to discontinue uh, with, the, with the old promoter. They moved out because of the increasing uh, competition, online competition, they had to discontinue. This new promoter um, willing to come back and start another book show at the Civic Auditorium and I hope it's gonna be a very successful one. Uh, Jok Chen uh, Community of Los Angeles Yoga Group had their um, yoga teaching and festival in the lower auditorium. It's also a new event and we're hoping to bring them back, same as the uh, uh, World Guitar Show. And um, we're hoping with, uh, with these new events, repeating events, they will attract new crowds and our business will just uh, roll as uh, newcomers, word of mouth, and uh, more exposure, of course. The Civic Auditorium staff consists of one full-time community services supervisor who oversees the management and operations of the Civic Auditorium and is also responsible for the event booking, planning, contracting, and uh, logistics, customer contact, sales, marketing, and also for department insurance and security guard service handling with the third parties. And also 12 part-time hourly Civic Auditorium operations st staff who are responsible for providing setup and tear down for the Civic Auditorium events, auditorium maintenance, and also for outside delivery setup and breakdown and other city department events throughout the year. The customer service office of the department is also located at the Civic Auditorium. They handle parks, facilities, reservations, and lifelong learning classes registrations. And the special event staff is also, her office is located at the Civic Auditorium and she's in charge for, she handles, coordinates with a Unity Fest, um, Rose Float, and uh, car, car Show. Cruise Night. Cruise, Cruise Night, <laughs> sorry. Uh, the following improvements to the Civic Auditorium have been completed or planned using to the Enterprise Fund. Just recently, uh, we completed the roof replacement. Uh, we're hoping that in 2014, after it gets approved, uh, we will complete our uh, exterior painting and also planning for parking booth and tra traffic improvement in the process and we're hoping that it's gonna be completed in 2014. And along with these uh, changes, we're also hoping that exterior, there, there will be some upgrades uh, for the exterior. The first impression is very important. Uh, we are also thinking to hoping that we can replace our uh, sound, our um, AC system in 2014 after it gets approved. 
This concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, please. Are there questions? I don't have a question, but this is just wonderful news. I remember a number of years the com back the commission was just perplexed on how to raise revenue at the Civic, and it, this is just incredible what's being done. How are we doing with the soccer? Is that are we getting? Quite a bit of interest in that. Yes, it's a great activity. Attracts so many young and adult uh, players. They love to come. They love the setup. It's beautiful. The only downside is the availability. It's not available always for everyone. Um, but we are hoping to just kind of accommodate them in a proper way that everybody stays happy and they use use uh, uh, the facility. Right. Well, we've really turned that around. It's wonderful news. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. Are we union? Uh, are you unionized the uh, building? Uh, do we have to work with the union for the functions? Like, do we have to bring uh, union uh, employees? No, uh, our hourly staff, they're not unionized. Yes. Okay. They're at will, uh, as needed basis. Uh, but our full-time employees, that are, we have a Glendale City Employee Association. And we have the Glendale Management Association. But you're not with the union. No, we're not union. We're, we're associations. Union rates. We don't charge. Union no, we don't rates. charge union rates. And is the building historic building? It is a historic building since 1937. Yes. And uh, how much revenue does the gun show used to bring us? Uh, the gun show, we would accumulate close to 20, little bit over $20,000 clear per event. Per rent. Per event, and we had three to four gun shows per year. Well, uh, it's a great facility, mm -hmm. and I don't see why we we cannot balance the budget. Uh, we have to. You're working hard. I have no doubt about that. But we have to bring in more corporations, more events, or organize ourselves to bring it to the balanced level. We have some limits with the college agreement. Uh, the college utilizes the civic auditorium parkings during the week, so we're limited to really have big events during the week. Uh, we cannot accommodate them with the parking. That's one of the downsides for the week weekdays use that brings our capability and limits our uh, limits our uh, freedom to book at any time. Weddings? How we do with weddings? Huh? Um, weddings? We're doing fine. Uh, the the weddings uh, that we have attracts mainly the um, non-Armenian community um, because um, of the way we're set up. Uh, we allow people to bring their own food and drinks, and people want to come and decorate the auditorium um, the way they would like to do it, to that. That limits one market that we have, big market, Armenian market, because they want, they prefer to go to the banquet hall where it's already all set up. But we have a good crowd. We have a good usage of by the, um, by the non-Armenian community coming and utilizing on the weekends. About like 57% of all our ev events are weddings and birthday parties, quinceañeras. Thank you. Questions? Uh, quick question. Um, you had mentioned that the parking facility is being utilized by Glendale Community College during yes. the weekdays. Now, is that a contract that has an ex like a s expiration date, or is that basically ongoing? It is a power agreement uh, with the city of Glendale, the management, and uh, and the college. It's a power agreement, yes. Which means, if if I may, it's it's joint powers agreement, which I believe um, expires next year. So we will be in negotiations, and uh, it's actually um, administered by the the public works department. Uh, but they'll be working with us on, on renegotiating the agreement with the college. But, but through the improvements, um, we believe that the auditorium will become more competitive with those banquet halls if we could make it look um, a nicer and complete the upgrades and through marketing and, and the presentation that you received um, earlier, uh, getting more people to notice the civic auditorium. Uh, we're hoping to continue to close that gap. Uh, we are trying to expand um, into um, um, different um, uh, genres of, of, of users. Um, like this, this year we have one circus um, in November and another circus um, in March. And I believe that's 
that's about fifteen thousand dollars per per circus. That's correct. We projected that the indoor soccer program, uh, because the auditorium uh, virtually sits idle Monday through Thursday with with nothing going on and you know the air conditioner is on full blast and and and, and we're incurring costs. Uh, initially, we projected that we we could probably profit about a hundred thousand dollars once the indoor soccer program takes hold and it's 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 booked a hundred percent of the time and we still think we're going to get there. We started off a little bit slower than that than we thought, but well, we still think we're going to get there. So it's it's a work in progress, but we're confident that within um, eighteen months to two years we'll be breaking even. And the way the enterprise fund works is we have about twenty. 20 or 25 programs where we charge a fee for service, and some programs um, uh, make good money, uh, some barely break even, or some don't, and of course Civic Auditorium is one that's not. In many respects, the Civic Auditorium owns the sports complex um, a lot, because the sports complex is, is a good revenue generator. Our film permits, we, we make anywhere between 50 and $75,000 profit um, a, a year. Um, our our sports leagues are are good revenue generators. Our our skate ca uh, camp, um, I'm sorry, our skate park um, loses money. Our aquatics program is not a money maker. Our day camps barely break even. So it's a delicate balance between um, basic services to the public, which are 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 our public services or at very reasonable cost, where our goal is not to to break even or make money. And then other programs where, where we can do pretty well with, um, with staff um, expertise and um, less, less time, we can get a, a much bigger bang for our buck. So we're constantly looking for different ways for generating uh, revenues, uh, even with our capital improvements. One of the reasons we are um, happy to, to um, be under construction and complete the Catalina Adobe facility, for example, it doesn't have restrooms. So we can hardly rent that out, and it's a beautiful setting for a wedding or an outdoor reception. But it was uh, dysfunctional because it didn't have restrooms. So until we decided to convert the, the gardener's garage to restrooms and um, in, improve the, the roadways and add string lights, it's going to be a beautiful venue for um, outdoor e events, and that'll become a, um, a good revenue generator. In fact, all of our facility rentals, um, probably second to the sports complex, are our highest revenue generators. So it's, and, and fortunately, we, we have built up, um, over time, we have built up a, a, a sizable uh, fund balance uh, for, uh, under our enterprise program, where we are able to pay for the $320,000 uh, roof at the Civic, which is what it costs. The, the five, six, or seven hundred thousand dollars it's going to take for a new HVAC system, the um, what is it, two hundred thousand uh, dollar paint job uh, for the Civic. So that's all coming out of the the fund balance that we were able to accumulate. At, at one point, it was three million dollars, and so we're starting to to use that money now. Um, probably next year, we'll be appropriating a million dollars to uh, replace the. The artificial turf fields at the sports complex because they've reached their you cannot, their uh, their life. Um, I think they're nine years old now, and they're supposed to last ten years. Um, so we're we're hopeful that we're chipping away at that that gap, and uh, within that next couple of years, we'll be breaking even at the Civic. That's our goal. Yeah, I I agree with Ara though. I think the goal to get that to just at least breaking even is is something we should certainly strive for. Go ahead, How do you manage the, now to control the manage the sound system, uh, the noise at the Adobe, since it's in uh, surrounded by a residential area, weddings and so on? Um, as part as part of the permit process, they they um, they will be told that they 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 will be required they, to apply for an amplified sound permit, yes. right? Yes. Uh, they would need to apply for an amplified sound permit that will go through the city clerk's office, our department, and the police department. And um, that application, you have to get uh, five signatures from neighbors around the area uh, for their approval also. So uh, they would need an amplified sound permit. It's a tough one there. Too. Yeah. And, it, and we'd limit the, the time. They'd probably have to close at, yes. at 10 o'clock, I think. And if I may add, uh, the, um, the amplified sound usually expires after 10 p.m. 
and also that we have a cap at 50 people at the cost of, at the Vertigo Adobe. So there won't be more than 50 people allowed at an event. So that is addressing some of the congestion issues in the neighborhood. Thank you. And uh, Sorry. So the event would need to end by 10 p.m.? At, well, um, I'm not sure about the event. I have to check on that, but I know that the amplified sound needs to stop at 10. And coming back to the Civic Auditorium, have we consulted with any consulting firm uh, to see if we can improve uh, or do more functions, more shows, or uh, that type of functions? Mm -hmm. Several years ago, there was a consulting group working with the management, I know. So it's kind of a, it's an interesting balance because you have city functions there as well, right? That's correct. That generates zero revenue. That's correct. What, what would you guess for just a percentage wise are the public functions compared to the private functions? The, we had 160, close to 168 events last year, just last year, mm -hmm. and uh, about 40 events were non-revenue producing events. And each event, if we had to charge a private promoter, probably they would generate average of thirty-five to $4,000 with a setup, equipment, rental, just the way we rent it out to the private public. See, that's the balance, that's the... That's the, another, another, another thing. thing, other than the parking, which I agree, when it comes back, that should be discussed that joint powers agreement, it's also government or city functions or whatever you, terminology you want to use that also goes there and uses, it sounds like, about 25% of the time. That's correct. The Civic Auditorium is an enterprise fund like a private property, mm -hmm. and we, op we want to operate like a private property. However, we also a community service building that we support the city events, and it gives us pride, really. Because um, by doing that, that we, you know, it's a it's a historic city building, and it sure. is being used for for a good cause. The closer you get to breaking even, the more proud we'll become of you. <laughs> and then we're gonna start working harder, actually. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> what is next? Item seven B two monthly activity reports at A Park Planning and Development. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission. I'm Emil Tatavosian with Park Planning and Development. We work closely with our friends at Maintenance and Recreation and the Civic Auditorium to maintain the quality of life in our Glendale with our recreational and park needs. As a, just a brief overview, we currently have one project under construction. We have, um, we will soon start on three projects, construction projects before the end of the year. And then we'll ha we have about five projects within the planning and design phase. So we have been pretty busy. Um, I have about nine projects that I want to give you a heads up on a status on. I just mentioned our work at the Catalina Virgigo Adobe Renovation Project. This is located within our Virgigo Woodlands neighborhood. It's a historic gem with a beautiful setting. Uh, the improvements include uh, replacing the, pardon me, Converting the existing garage structure, which is located, it's that facility right there. This drawing is a little misleading. The adobe is right here. There's a driveway that goes to the street. This is the existing outdoor space that's uh, a patio space that's uh, decomposed gravel. We are converting the existing rest, um, garage structure into restrooms and a gardener's room. We are expanding the picnic area, uh, the DG area. We are replacing all of the um, broken benches and dilapidated furniture, and we will also be hanging festive lights uh, to make it more attractive for our local users, but also potentially revenue generating. The next project, we have an ongoing program to go through our, uh, we do an annual inspection of all, all of our playground um, facilities. And this year we have targeted these six, six uh, parks which will be getting new playground structures. This program is funded through CDBG, Capital Improvement. Uh, it says Quimby, but that's the same as our development impact fees and enterprise funds. 
Uh, the first two projects, that, the first two parks that will get new structures are Dunsmore and New York, and if you live close by, you'll notice that there's a sign there saying that the facility will soon be closed because the structure is under order and we should be uh, starting installation very soon. We hope to finish these, uh, the replacement of these, the remaining four, um, before next summer. That's our strategy. Then our neighborhood or our city gem, the Civic Auditorium, both uh, uh, Jess and Laura mentioned some of the upcoming improvements. Uh, we hope to paint the exterior completely. Uh, I don't have a facade of the southern entrance. Laura mentioned how the, the, uh, the lower level facility gets rented out. That has a separate entrance, which is a little misleading if you're not um, familiar with the, with the facility. We are hoping to install attractive awnings there to define a, a nice pedestrian entrance for uh, folks who will be um, renting that facility. And we have some beautiful historic lights that are in dire need of um, restoration. We'll be doing that work. We also hope to replace the entire HVAC system. Uh, and we're hoping that we finish all this work by mid next year. Then we have, we are excited about two very important projects, both of them located uh, south of Colorado, heavily used within very dense uh, neighborhoods. One of them is the Maple Park Site Improvement Project, which you've seen before. I'm happy to say that the bids are coming in this Wednesday. We're keeping our fingers crossed that they come under budget so we can uh, um, afford to do the improvements are as approved and anticipated. We hope to, uh, this park is very interesting because we have a very interesting mix of uh, patronage there. We have older folks, we have a, a lot of teenagers who hang out there after school because they don't have uh, backyards. Uh, we also have a lot of uh, new parents that uh, socialize and gather around the play structure. Just to give you an idea about the site, this is the existing um, community center that was restored a couple of years ago. We are introducing exercise equipment along this path right next to the existing tennis court. And we're also uh, introducing more uh, equipment there. The idea is that this area would be serving our adult seniors or adult users within the community, and this would be targeting our teenage users, which have different recreational needs than our older patrons. We are expanding the playground facility with a lot of uh, hands-on uh, features that encourage uh, kids between two to five years old. We are also expanding some of our picnic areas to make them more attractive for, rentable, for uh, revenue generation. We will also be renovating the existing restroom structure, the public restroom structure right there. Uh, this is a project that's funded through our CDBG program and also development impact fees. This is another exciting project. I forgot to mention that there are three projects <laughs> south of Colorado. This one is a brand new facility, our first uh, brand new park in a very long time, Maryland Avenue Park on South Maryland, located uh, just north of Chevy Chase and south of Colorado um, Street. Um, I forgot to mention earlier under staff comments that we're anticipating our, we are scheduling our grand break uh, ceremony for this park on uh, um, Tuesday, October 8th at 10 o'clock in the morning. Your invitations will be arriving shortly. We are excited about this. This is a project that is fully funded through a Prop 84 grant and approximately $1.7 million worth of construction. Um, brand new park facility. This is Maryland Avenue. There is a a residential just to the north and to the south as well and separates from the other side with an alley. Um, just to put this um, within the context of our downtown, on the other side of Maryland are the other, uh, it's the commercial strip facing Grand Boulevard. A lot of our auto dealers are located there. So this not only serves our residential community but also helps our um, day community that work in, in downtown Glendale. This park, as um, all of our other parks, um, features picnic areas, playground um, equipment. We are introducing a fitness equipment for, for adults, a community garden facility, and a lot of uh, public art. Um, so we hope to start 
soon after our groundbreak and uh, finished by April of next year. So both this project as well as Maple Park will have a lot of, uh, will provide new park facilities for our kids once they're out of school next summer. Uh, we just talked about the Pacific Edison campus celebrating its 10th year anniversary. So this field over there located on the Edison Elementary School is 10 years old. This picture is misleading because this shows the artificial turf. Currently there is just dirt there because of our extensive usage. Um, we are using CDBG funds to replace the existing natural turf with um, um, artificial turf. Uh, once we award the contract, we hope to begin sometime in November and be again done by April of next year. This is the other exciting park. This is Palmer Park, again, south of Glendale Avenue, uh, pardon me, uh, south of Colorado uh, Street. Uh, heavily used, very interesting group of patrons use this park. Um, it's active all day long. On the weekends, it's truly a community center. You can barely see the the picnic facility shelter back there, but it's just packed over the weekends. We're hoping uh, uh, to do the following improvements at this park. The irrigation system is in dire need of complete overhaul. The playground structures will be completely renovated and replaced. Uh, we have a two to five structure as well as five to 12 um, um, age groups. There is an existing wading pool that we want to uh, completely replace because it's a very desirable amenity down here. We have a half a basketball court. We hope to expand that to a full court while retaining the existing half court. There's an existing faci uh, skate facility that we hope that we'll have enough money to be able to expand a portion of that and again introduce new fitness equipment. We hope to finish the design of this project by early next year and then proceed with uh, um, construction, bidding and construction. Let's see. Um, then, of course, our one and only river walk. You may recall that we grand opened our phase one last December. Um, I'm happy to say that we have uh, three grant sources to measure our funds, um, measure our grants, and one Prop 84 grant. The Prop 84 grant and uh, one of the measure our grants is strictly for the phase uh, uh, two of the project, which connects the, new, the recently completed phase one to some of the improvements that have already been done for phase two through a, a construction of a confluence park where the Verdugo Wash uh, um, dumps into the LA River. Then the third uh, phase of this project will be using the Measure R funding to study potential bridge locations to connect to Griffith Park to further enhance our rec uh, recreational amenities within the city. That concludes my brief report. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. I know I went pretty fast, but I was excited. Any questions? Wow. This is all good news, all these projects. Yeah, yeah. we'll be busy. Yeah, I Thank love you. It. Thank you. What's next? 7B2B Park Services. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Panosian, who would be giving this report, uh, went home ill, so he's asked for your forbearance, and he'll make it up uh, next month. He'll give you a, a slide presentation. And in the meantime, you do have his uh, work order uh, list, so you still get a sense of um, all the work that was performed by the Park Services staff over the last month. Okay. Well, thank you for doing that. We'll look forward to his dual report next time. What do we have next? 7B2C Recreation and Community Services. Okay, thank you. Um, in your packets, you'll find the Recreation and Community Services report for the month of August. Um, Civic Auditorium in August had 27 events, uh, which one of them uh, was a de department sponsored non revenue activity. Um, as Laura mentioned earlier, uh, Glendale Glory 4 did come back. Um, it was a boxing event held on August 24th. Uh, we met with the promoter last week, and then we're working on uh, hopefully another four to five shows a year um, uh, in the coming year. Um, so we're really excited about that. It was a very successful um, event, and the users were happy, and the promoter uh, was very happy with uh, the results. Um, 
We had a couple of department-sponsored events. Uh, staff at Pacific Community Center worked uh, uh, the National Night Out at Pacific. Um, National Night Out was held on August 6th. Um, it was a community-wide event. Uh, this is the fifth year that uh, staff had the event at Pacific. Uh, we also had staff set up the movies in the park uh, equipment at Nibley Park for the Ross Moyne Homeowners Association uh, for the National Night Out. So uh, there were two uh, different National Night Out events that staff worked. Um, we provided the services and uh, we had you know nothing but compliments. Everything, everyone came out and enjoyed the festivities with the police department and also with park staff. Um, total revenue for the month of August at the Civic was $29,326. Uh, Year-to-date revenue was $53,686. Um, the customer service and community centers report, um, the revenue report, we processed 266 revenue permits in August, 80 non-revenue permits. Uh, this was an increase um, of $76,265 in revenue, um, which was a 74% increase from August 2012. Uh, so rentals are picking up. A lot of people are using our facilities. Um, um, it's good that we uh, commission approved back in February um, reserving Cerritos Park. I was at Cerritos Park uh, Sunday. I passed by it, and there was a huge party. You know, kids were enjoying the playground and the water feature. So that's these uh, amenities that we have at our parks. You know, thanks to our CIP section and our park services staff, uh, park service section. Um, just brings in more revenue. So um, we like to thank those two sections. Um, Year-to-date revenue, um, we had 521 revenue permits and 178 non-revenue permits, uh, totaling 127,000 um, in revenue, which is a 56% increase year-to-date. Uh, one thing that I want to point out is the film permit revenue. Um, as of this year, we've uh, brought in $35,963 compared to $3,000 uh, last year. The reason why is we have a five-week film shoot at Dunsmore Baseball Field. It's a baseball film. They're shooting actually this month, starting September 3rd all the way up until the first week of October. Um, you know, Monique, Gabrielle, and Coco, and myself, we worked with the location scout about a week, week and a half, trying to convince them to come to uh, Dunsmore and use Dunsmore instead of uh, a field in Pasadena. So we're really happy... Uh, they're um, they're there, you know, filming. Um, I believe it'll be part of the Sundance Film Festival too, in December, January. So we're looking uh, forward to that film uh, in post production. Um, last but not least, I want to announce that September 28th at Central Park, the Street Food Cinema, uh, they'll be reserving Central Park. It's a movies in the park program and also a uh, food truck festival uh, event. It'll be held in the middle of Central Park, September 20th, between 6 p.m. and about 11. So if any of our viewers are interested, they can go to Central Park or if the commission, if any of the commission members are interested. I believe there will be an admission fee uh, between 7 to $10. So if anyone is interested, it'll be held at Central Park, uh, located at 201 East Colorado on September 28th. So if you have any questions regarding um, the recreation report. Do we have any questions? No. Thank you very much. Thank you. 7B2D, Human Services. Good afternoon, President Khan, members of the Commission. Uh, Moises Carrillo, Community Services and Parks, Human Services section. Um, really brief, I'm going to be very brief today. We wanted just to sort of invite the commissioners to our annual community meeting for the Community Development Block Grant, our housing programs, and our homeless program. It's a community meeting we hold each year to ascertain public input, community input for these various federally funded programs. Um, this year we're looking at approximately $2.9 million in annual HUD funds for fiscal year 2014. And we will have a process where we invite the community and community members to uh, give us their input, um, provide um, 
some type of uh, direction to give us uh, what we call our action plan. Our action plan is our actual uh, community development block grant plan that will guide us for the next year in terms of projects, activities, programs that we will fund for fiscal year 2014-15. Um, by and large, we do have a significant amount of park funds for, uh, I'm sorry, city BG funds and park activities as uh, uh, Emil mentioned before and as well as some other um, recreation programs. So it's very important for the Commissioners and Parks Department to have its um, use known as far as uh, our block grant program. This event will be held on Thursday, September 26 at 7 p.m. at Men Elementary School at 501 East Acacia Avenue. And um, we will have child care, we will have translation, we will have children's activities to uh, and make sure that um, we have um, enough public participation. Um, certainly we would uh, enjoy having the commissioner members there. Um, this is part of the CDBG advisory committee's role, um, which is our other commission with our parks department to uh, participate. So your brother, sister um, commissioners from the CDBG advisory committee will be participating and um, certainly like to have you there as well to attend the meeting. And you get a good insight of what the uh, community need, the needs are. A lot of it is, is really park related. A lot of it is park services, programs, activities. So it's a very good insight to what the community needs are from all the community and, and primarily South Glendale to uh, to hear what's going on in the community. So if that, if there's any other questions, I can answer. No, it doesn't look like we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next we have 7B2E, Workforce Development. Good afternoon, President Khan and uh, Commissioners. I'm Don Nakamoto, the Administrator over Workforce Development. Uh, I actually had a fairly lengthy uh, PowerPoint that I'm going to delay till our next meeting. Um, and just highlight a few things that are happening in workforce development. Uh, we're currently working on a grant, a uh, state grant, to help the workers at DreamWorks uh, Animation in Glendale. They had a couple months ago announced a layoff of about 350 or 400 of their workers. And so we got $300,000 to assist some of those workers. So far we've trained about 26 and probably will train an additional 15 uh, workers at that company to uh, retool their skills so they can get back into the workforce and it looks fairly positive at this point we're anticipating that it's likely that almost all of them will get back into the uh, the industry and obtain work again so we're pretty happy about the progress of that grant uh, we're also pursuing a federal grant in the next few months for about uh, five million dollars uh, teaming with the, the county of Los Angeles one of the things we're finding, because um, a lot of the entertainment content development is shifting from normal uh, mediums such as television, motion pictures, over to uh, tablets, smartphones, it's creating a whole new industry. And uh, so far we've found about 100,000 unduplicated information technology job openings in L.A. County just in the past year. So we can kind of see the demand that's happening there. And we're trying to develop some training programs, hopefully to create a qualified pool here in Glendale Burbank to spur some of this industry in the Glendale Burbank area and attract some of the companies here. Uh, so that's another major project we're working on. Finally, uh, as a federally funded uh, organization, we're hit by the uh, sequestration at the federal level. Uh, our normal allocation in the first quarter of 2013-14 um, fiscal year, we only received about 10 to 15 percent of our normal allocation and we're uh, trying to get by uh, with that reduced allocation. The federal government put all the cuts just in the first quarter of the fiscal year, which made it hard on a lot of organizations. And so, uh, for example, I believe five one-stop centers uh, such as the Verdugo Job Center that we fund, uh, have gone out of business in the last uh, month or so. There have been hundreds of layoffs in our industry in L.A. County, but it looks like we're going to get by unscathed in that area. So things, uh, as far as us continuing to provide services, look pretty good. Uh, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. No, it doesn't look good. We do. Thank you. Item 8 is adjournment.
Do we have any other comments? Then we are adjourned. Thank you.